Hello, Lovelace, and welcome to today's history lesson, our wider curriculum lesson. And our challenge for today is, can I design an Anglo-Saxon brooch? Okay. Now, in our last lesson, we found out how archaeologists found Anglo-Saxon artifacts, including the shield, a belt, a belt buckle, some coins, a sword, and a brooch. Okay. Now, if you remember, the brooches were worn by men and women. They were a practical piece of their outfit because it held it held their cloak on. They would wrap an animal skin, a cloak around their shoulders, and then fasten it with a brooch, similar to this one. Okay. So men and women both wore brooches like that. And you can see there how it's used to fix their cloak in place. So the jewellery you wore signified your status within the group. You, were, you wanted the fanciest bit of jewellery possible. You wanted the golds and the silvers. You wanted the jewels. You really did want to bling yourself. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons were really keen on their bling because it, it showed their importance within their village, within their kingdoms. Okay. So... Anything they, they wore was often very ornate, filled with precious metals like golds and silvers, and filled with precious stones as well. So here's just some of them. And you can see how beautiful they are and the craftsmanship that's gone into putting these things together. Just take a moment to wow at the intricacy the detail. And see if you can spot any recurring patterns or themes. Okay. Now, although it's not a rule, many of the brooches found had a four part repeating pattern. If I just go back, I'm gonna let's just see if we've got that here. So if we imagine this brooch split into quarters, you can see that each quarter will be the same. Same here. We could draw a line straight down the middle and straight across, and we'd have the same pattern. You can see there are some jewels missing from this one, but if they were all in place you could see that there is a symmetry to this. You've got four quarters that are the same pattern. Same again here, much clearer because of the lines, but each quarter is a repeat of itself. Same here, same here, and same here. Okay, so there are exceptions. There are plenty of brooches out there that don't follow this pattern. But I thought it'd be a nice challenge for us to see if we can do a four part repeating pattern. So you are going to, for your task today, you're going to design your own uh, Anglo-Saxon brooch. Whatever pattern appeared in one section, you're going to repeat in the other. So whatever we choose to do here is then exactly the same here, exactly the same here, exactly the same here. So you only have to, you have to design a quarter of your brooch because you're just going to copy it three times after that. Okay. So there it is. You're going to design your own Anglo-Saxon brooch. You could do some research. You could actually copy or uh, borrow some ideas from an original design. So feel free to go out there and use some of the designs that are all already existing. Uh, or you can create your own completely from scratch. I really don't mind. So think carefully. Uh, do you want to magpie ideas from an original? Or do you want to try and create your own? So job one, I'm going to take you through the various stages so you know exactly how to do this. Step one is to just draw a circle. Now, if you've got a set of compasses at home, that's great. If not, 
just find something circular to draw around. I used a small plate for this one, but anything will do. Okay. Uh, you, I'm sure you've all got plenty of circular things. Don't go too small. Otherwise, you're going to find it very, very fiddly to do your design. But equally, don't go too big either. I mean, a full-size dinner plate, too big because you, you'd have far, far too much space to fill with your design. So, as I say, this was just a little, a very small plate, a little saucer, but something something that's round so you've got a nice, clean circle shape. Next of all, you're going to draw with a straight edge or a ruler across and split your circle into four sections. Make these lines really, really light because they're not part of your design. They're there as a guide, okay? So at the end of it, you might want to rub those out or you certainly don't want to notice them. You don't want to be able to see them clearly. So really faint across there, just as a guide. Okay, but please use a straight edge or a ruler. Then you're going to come up with your first quarter design. Now I've done this uh, with a Sharpie with felt, so it stands out on the camera. You don't need to do that. You're, so it's perfectly okay to do yours in pencil because you can see yours clearly. I say I just used hard black lines so they would show up clearly on the picture. It, but you can see here, I've taken a curve around. I've, I've got a section there, and I've put some circular jewels in. And that's what, uh, in my head, that's what I'm thinking there will be. Uh, I've got some more sections here. And then in a lot of the uh, brooches, you will see these swirls. So I thought, let's get a couple of those in as well. Okay, So that's my first quarter. All I need to do now is be able to repeat that. So there we go, repeating it. Now, remember, you can turn the paper. So if it's easier to work this way around, then simply turn, turn the paper around so you're always drawing in the same quarter. Just keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. So don't feel that you've got to suddenly be able to draw upside down. You can rotate the paper to make it easier for you. But all the features of my first bit of design should be mirrored, should match in this part. This one should not be any different to this. The whole point of this type of design is that each section is exactly the same or as close to exactly the same as you can make it. Then we get the third section. You can see again, each quarter is the same as the previous one. And finally, we complete the design. So by completing the design, we've created this cross type shape in the middle. We've got our jewels surrounding the edge uh, of our brooch. And we've got these colored pa these panels here, which time to add a little bit of color. Okay. And so that's the final step, adding some color. Now, I know that precious metals are important. So I thought that the surround of my brooch could be silver. The cross design would be silver with a green inlay, maybe uh, emeralds, something like that. And then these panels here would be solid gold with the spirals hammered out into the gold to form those patterns there. And there may be some rubies around the surround the red stones there. Okay. So always thinking about the final design, thinking about the colors, thinking about how ornate it is. But that's where we're working up, working towards today. Okay. Designing your own Anglo-Saxon brooch, coming up with your own design or one inspired by history, working your way through. So remember, start with your circle, Break your circle into quarters, and then whatever design is in one quarter, you need to mirror in each of the following three. So all told, you've got your four sections, and each one is a mirror image of the previous one. Enjoy your designs, guys. Okay? 
take some time with this. We are going to be doing something with this design in our next lesson. We're actually going to be making this for real using our uh, salt dough. Okay, so that's for the next lesson. For now, though, we need the design. So once you've completed your design, uh, photographed it and put it onto tapestry, please, please keep hold of it. You will need it for the next lesson. Okay, right. That's the end of today. Good luck with your design. Enjoy your artwork. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. And I will see you next time.